go. Hook and Orange versus Moxley and Wheeler Yuta. They had a good match, and for the, only the second time in his entire AW career, Hook was pinned by Wheeler Yuta, which likely sets up Wheeler versus Hook in an FTW title match. And the other big point of the match was Orange went for the Orange Punch on Moxley, and Moxley just no-sold it. And so now Orange is second-guessing everything about himself. I know how it feels, Orange. I remember when I only had one move, and I hit Nick Gage with it three times. He didn't sell it. You know what happened to me afterwards? I was killed. So good luck Saturday, brother. Then we had the announcement that uh, Swerve and Hangman were going to have a uh, a stare down, and they were not allowed to attack each other, put hands on each other, or the match was off and both guys would be suspended through the end of 2023. So Hangman came out, and my God, the promo this guy cut on Swerve. He just ate this guy for lunch, and Swerve just, his reaction to it was incredible. And finally, the big payoff was Hangman saying, you know, they said we couldn't touch but they didn't say anything about Nana. And he attacks Nana, and he lays him out, and Swerve can't save Nana. He's not allowed to touch Hangman. So he has to stand there and watch. They send out a bunch of blokes to make the save. Hangman kills these dudes, lays them out, hits a buckshot on one of them. This was the hottest that Hangman has felt in a long time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Swerve is perfect. Nana is perfect. Everything they do, every motion that they make, and they were perfect during that promo last night. And what that promo showed was you didn't have to do a breaking and entering. You could add Swerve, do some sort of felony that was not as corny and campy as what they did. A less corny felony on a wrestling show. Well, you know how Any felony on a wrestling show is inherently corny. You would, yeah, so maybe you could have to throw two dimes off the bridge again. (laughs) That was corny. Well, look, it could be a, 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 they could have done something else there, but the bottom line is this was a hard 180 from that. This is the, what Hangman needs to be a lot more often. So when he is the anxious millennial drinking cowboy that he is sometimes, you know, you have a reason and a story for it. This is the badass they actually need on their TV, and I hope they keep up this character, whether it's with Swerve or with somebody else for a while. We had Sky Blue and Red Velvet, which had absolutely zero heat early. But, but they did get God, him. did it go long. They did get him with some near falls there at the end. And finally, <sighs> Sky hit a botch code blue and got the pin. So she is in the three-way on Saturday. Miro did a promo. He wants Garcia. Talked about that earlier. Talked about the uh, Tony Storm, Mariah May thing. Essentially, Mariah marked out for her. Tony said, uh, I'm not doing autographs now. And Mariah said, well... If you need anything, let me know. So uh, Saturday's coming. And then Tony demanded a tune-up match. Samoa Joe killed John Cruz and then reminded MJF, you're in my hood. Once again, I extend my offer of friendship. In the best match on the show, the Young Bucks versus Penta and Commander, golly, they had a great match. And the crowd's going nuts for the Young Bucks because it's their hometown. And, you know, they're doing all their stuff, and the people love it and everything. But then finally at the end, the ref's back is turned. Commander does a springboard. Nick punts this guy right in the balls. And then he punts Penta right in the balls. Their hometown boos them. Cajones. And they hit the BTE trigger. Balls is not a bad word. (laughs) It's sports byline. All they talk about is balls. Bouncing here and there. He hits Commander with the BT trigger, gets the pin. And then afterwards, they have a, a thing backstage where Jericho and Kenny walk up, and Kenny is upset that they cheated. And Matt essentially says, and this is absolutely completely true, you know this is the best version of us. Well, and then true. he notes, what about all your success? The best version of you. Not this one. And so Jericho just says, don't listen to these guys. These don't know if I can say that word or not. It's an animal. He calls them jackasses. The animal, the donkey. Mm -hmm. And they get a big fight. Burrows. Separated by officials. Guns won a squash in five seconds. Made fun of MJF. Said he was doomed. Wardlow then cut a promo on MJF. He's going to beat him up as well. And then, yes, golly. This is just the difference between me and I'm sure everybody in the chat. 
Powerhouse, Takeshita, Cage, and Kyle Fletcher versus Jericho, Kenny, Abushi, and Paul White. Too dangerous. I mean, God, hit each other with bikes, and the bump Kenny Okota Bushi took off that bike, and then Kenny breaks a beer bottle on, uh, I think it was on uh, Kyle Fletcher. Fletcher's head. His hands all cut all the heck. And then poor Paul White can't move. He cannot move. And they brawl backstage, and and him and Hobbs are standing on this platform when they cut to the back. And Hobbs, he barely gets this dude up because they got so little room. It's like he can't even move his feet to better position himself. He has to just herk this guy up. It's like Hogan and Andre at Mania 3. It's, it's <laughs> hip toss! Or I guess that was Yokozuna in Luger. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, he barely gets this guy up, and then he just tosses him off this platform. And Paul White took the most painful looking uncomfortable horrible bump on this car but he slid and off he's the hood dead. and looked good i'm like god is anybody gonna survive this thing and then finally there at the end uh the finish was one winged angel on cage i mean they all worked hard like too hard and just dudes getting killed left and right if you enjoyed it happy for you i was in mortal fear through all of this terrifying in spots and then mjf came out for a promo and basically said he's a man at the top of the mountain he ain't got no friends and all these mountain climbers i guess that'd be uh darby he's gonna climb everest they're all climbing and knock him off the perch but damn it he's not getting knocked off his perch and he's gonna teach jay white a lesson on saturday night and so jay white comes out he says come on you're pretending to be a hero. You're a villain. You always will be. You're not fooling anybody with that devil mask. You've told people you're the devil. Nobody's on your level. But you're not the hero. These fans are going to drop you. You mean nothing to them, and they mean nothing to you. And so he tells the Bullet Club Gold to get him. They hit the ring. Juice lays him out with the punch. Guns hit 310 to Yuma. Jay hits the Blade Runner. Juice counts the pin on MJF, Lenny. Juice counted the pin as Jay White pinned MJF. And then Samoa Joe just watched on. So that's the final build on the A show for Full Gear coming up on Saturday. And I think uh, it's Lenny. pretty clear what's happening in a lot of these matches. Get your quarters ready, sucker. Get ready to mail them out, yeah. out to, to Washington State. I was doing the math. The quarter machines nowadays are they're yeah. on average. Well, I shouldn't say average. Most of most of the toys are fifty cents each, so it's two quarters. Mm -hmm. So by my math, each of my uh, children will get to go to the machine uh, two hundred times, mm. and uh, that will bring them great joy. Well, it's better than taking those quarters and putting them in the Coin Star machine inside that place because you're going to lose like fifteen cents off every dollar. That's a hundred toys they'll get out of that machine because of this bet. Yeah, Lenny, look at that. Yeah, look Lenny, you're do. doing a good thing for the children. The children. Yes, it's mm. just cheap. Anyway, that was that. Yeah. So uh, I guess the only real thing to uh, discuss about Sunday is uh, the match. You'll be doing a so show? I, well, I look at all of this stuff. It's like, obviously, MJF wins, Tony Storm wins, yeah. and uh, I don't know about the tag match. probably doesn't matter. And Statlander, I'm sure, wins. I'm sure Hangman wins. Uh, don't know about the Sting match. I guess we'll have to see where they're going. But the Golden Jets are going to win, and uh, MJF and his mystery partner are probably going to win. So that leaves... Uh, Why would you, the Golden Jets win, though? Because they have to disband if they lose. And they've, they've been cares? together for three weeks. It doesn't that's, make any sense. But that's They've the got thing shirts. Is... They've got everything. But that's the whole thing. Well, who cares? People buy shirts no matter what. Like, the NWO hasn't been around for a long time. People are still buying those shirts for God knows what reason. But when it comes to, like, they don't have to, like, be a team all the time. And the Young Bucks at some point need to win. Don't they technically have a contender spot, a title Yeah, and shot? that's on the line. Mm -hmm. And they're going to lose it to the Golden Jets. That's, now I couldn't I even make my like talking it. point. Go ahead. I'll do it there after the do. break. Observer Live. Well, my point that I was trying to make was about Sorry. Orange and Moxley because that one is in great doubt to me because here's the deal Moxley was never supposed to win the title 
He's supposed to beat Orange, and he was supposed to do whatever he was going to do. And something happened, obviously, and he uh, he got hurt. He called an audible. Phoenix got the title. Phoenix then got hurt, and Orange won from Phoenix. So now they're booking the exact same match again. And, you know, when Tony comes up with an idea, he likes to do his idea. And when things get in the way of his idea, he waits and waits and waits, and then he goes right back to his idea again. So... And I, I look at this match, and my first thought is, well, he's just going to go right back. We're going to just get a repeat. Moxley destroys him, and then Moxley is the champion, and we're right back to where we were before Moxley got hurt. But I think that would be a terrible idea. And I think that the the best case scenario is, okay, fine. You want to go back to Moxley as champ. That's great. Doesn't have to be now. Let Orange Cassidy win. Let him show that he can beat John Moxley. And now they're one and one. Moxley beat him on one pay-per-view. Orange beat him on this pay-per-view. Got to have a rubber match at some point down the road, two, three months. Some stip, some sort, I don't know what it is. And uh, then Moxley can get his win, and you can do whatever you were going to do with the guy. But I think just doing an exact repeat of the next pay-per-view, beating Orange Cassidy twice in a row from John Moxley, I don't know, man. I'm not a fan of 50-50 booking, but... Orange is such a valuable commodity in this company. I don't like the idea of just beating him again. It seems like there's better ways that you could do it. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.